So hi, I'm Omar. Uh, I will talk about how to craft ML demos with Python. Uh, just quick question. Do you know what hugging face is? Yeah? yeah? OK. Do you know what radio is? Right? Uh, no worries. So have you seen something like this in the last couple of weeks? <laughs> so this is Dali Mini. Uh, Dali Mini is a public uh, space, a public demo that anyone can try out directly in the web. It allows you to write something. In this case, it says the Timor Gorgon from Stranger Things holding a basketball. And it will generate images. Uh, and this is an open source, public, free model. This is not the OpenAI DALI uh, version. And this is a demo created uh, just with a couple of lines of code using Gradio, which is an open source tool. Uh, I will talk a bit more about it in a couple of minutes. Uh, and this was launched, uh, or this got viral in early June. Uh, since then, it has had over 70 million views uh, in just the last month, so, which is quite wild. But there are many, many other demos. There are over 5,000 public open source spaces in the last uh, nine months. This one is called Informative Drawings. It allows any user to upload any picture, and it will give you some nice uh, drawings or lines around it. And this one is a bit uh, wilder. Uh, it gives you some object, uh, and it allows you to write something, like an explanation uh, a person, a man, a woman, uh, wearing a hat, with a shirt, with a skirt, and it will draw uh, an image of a person based on that. Uh, so what is this about uh, demos? Uh, and it is about making machine learning more accessible and more public and more open for everyone. Uh, so these pictures are from a conference called CBPR. CBPR is one of the top computer vision conference, conferences in the ecosystem. Uh, and a few years ago, People were creating papers, they were publishing papers, but they were not creating any demos or any way for people to try out the model, models directly. So in CBPR this year, it was a bit different. Quite a bit of people were sharing uh, demos, so that meant that people could go there and, or open their phones or open their computers and directly try out the models in their browsers. So without having to run any code, without having to know too much about machine learning, without having the resources to train any of these models, they were uh, anyone, even if they were not from a computer science or software engineering background, uh, they could go and try out uh, these, these models thanks to these demos. And it was very, very different three years ago. So this was a spreadsheet uh, of how it was done before, which has all of the paper titles from one of these conferences, the authors, uh, as you can see, many of them did not have the code available, uh, and things like this. And today, we have uh, things in a very different way. So for example, this one is for uh, CBPR. Uh, and now people are open sourcing not just the code to train the models, uh, but they are also open sourcing the model weights, uh, the data sets that were used to train these models, and also public demos for anyone to try out. So for example, uh, here people can uh, go for the CBPR, which is this computer vision conference I was talking before, and they can find which uh, papers have a hugging face space or a model uh, re directly related. And I will talk a bit more about this in a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to uh, give this comparison of how it was done before and how it's done now. Uh, so why demos? So first, it allows to easily present to a wider audience. So let's say that you create a very nice demo about some model uh, about language, for example, about Spanish but then you only have white male computer scientists trying out the model. So of course you will not identify a bunch of biases that the model will have. So thanks to this, you can really have anyone, and that really means anyone, just open their browser and trying out these models. Uh, and then with flagging, you can identify lots of biases that the models might have. Second is that it allows reproduci reproducibility in research. So what is reproducibility? It means that these results that are shared in your paper can be replicated by others or reproduced by others. And that means that anyone can go there, test with their own image, and see that the model actually works. And it's not just some uh, cherry-picked result by some researchers. And finally, it allows to identify and debug different failure points. So for example, uh, maybe the certain model was not working for certain type of handwriting, for example, and that's a nice way to identify it. And these things are only identifiable if you really have a wider audience, uh, a wider, diverse set of people trying out these models. 
So we're really at a turning point in usage of machine learning. Until a couple of years ago, even two years ago, uh, just the people that knew about software engineering, just the people that knew about machine learning, or the people that knew actually how to run the code were able to try out these models. Now anyone that has a browser can go up and try out these models, which is quite interesting. And previously, let's say, you spend uh, six months training some fancy models, and then you want to build a, a web app. Uh, so then you realize that you need to learn JavaScript, uh, Flask, Docker, CSS. Uh, and then you might say, OK, uh, I won't do it. Building a demo will be quite complicated. But now uh, building a demo is easier than it looks. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, previously you had to use a bunch of different languages, a bunch of different tools. So first you train your model, and for that you might use TensorFlow, scikit-learn, PyTorch, which is in Python. Uh, then you might use Flask uh, and Docker. Uh, then you might want to do, use SQL. And then at the end, the interactive interface. Previously, it was always with JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and front-end technologies. And I heard that the Python communities don't like uh, CS, uh, sorry, CSS and JavaScript too much. Uh, so of course, they replaced everything with Python. So Gradio is an open source tool. It's an open source library uh, which allows people to build uh, demos with 10 lines of code. So it's really uh, quite simple. So even if you don't know anything about machine learning, uh, don't worry. Uh, you can use Gradio to build some nice interactive interfaces. Uh, and I just want to show a couple of other demos before diving in a bit more into it. So this one is uh, from a paper from Microsoft. Microsoft actually built this demo. And it allows people to upload two different audio files, uh, so someone speaking. And it allows to identify if it's the same person speaking or if, it's of, or if the audios correspond to different persons. So it's a voice authentication. And this one is using a model called Jojo Gun. So it allows to do face stylization. So here you see myself uh, in Disney style. Uh, and now you, s you will be thinking like, OK, this looks extremely complicated. I don't want to do this. Uh, but don't worry. It, it's really quite simple. And I will show the building blocks of Gradio. Uh, and this is everything. Uh, so first, you import Gradio. Uh, then you have a interface. So the interface is the main part uh, the main building block of Gradio. Uh, and it has three components, or three parts. So first, it has an uh, input, or a set of inputs. So in this case, the, the demo is a demo in which a person uploads a picture of, a, of an animal, of, or any picture. And then it will classify what, uh, what animal this is. So for example, this is an American alligator. So the input here is an image. And then you specify what's the output. So the output can be text, image, audio. In this case, it's a label. So a label just means that it assigns a probability of a classification to this image. And then you have a, a prediction or inference function, which in this case, it's called classify image. But what is very nice about Gradio is that it's not tied to any ML library. So you can use Gradio with any code. So classify image is just an, uh, a Python function that takes an input, uh, does some magic and then has an output. But this can be anything that you want. So this could be a scikit-learn model. This could be a TensorFlow model. This could be raw Python code. This could be using uh, whatever tool that you in your uh, school, in your university, in your company, whatever tool you use, you can use within this uh, function. The other part that is nice is that you can run this anywhere. So you can uh, run this in the terminal. Uh, if you like Jupyter, you can run this in Jupyter. If you like Colab, you can use that in Google Colab. Uh, so I've talked quite a bit, and I will show now code, because I think that might be nicer. So uh, in this Colab, and I can share the code later, uh, I'm just installing a couple of libraries that I will use. But here I'm showing, yeah, I think this is better. Here I'm showing the same built-in blocks. So I have a Gradio interface which as an input uh, has text, and it will output text. And that it has a prediction function, which in this case it's called grid. So grid is really just saying hello and then the name. I said before that it could be any Python function, so this is also allowed. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds, uh, and I will zoom out a bit. But pretty much here I have my demo. And I can write here test, hello test. Nice, so I can write hello Mar. And that's pretty much it. So now uh, in 10 lines of code, I was able to build this nice, uh, maybe a bit silly hello world demo. But what is nice is that this grid function could be any 
code that you have. So uh, many people did, uh, mentioned before that don't know what Hugging Face is. So Hugging Face is an open source company that has a bunch of open source libraries. One which is very famous is called Transformers. Transformers allows people to easily use uh, existing pre-trained transformer models. Transformer is a very popular architecture nowadays in the natural language processing and computer vision and audio domains in machine learning. Uh, don't worry too much about it, but what is very nice is that you have access to over 60,000 uh, public open source demos shared by research labs, by the community, for many, many different applications, for hundreds of uh, spoken languages, which is quite nice. Uh, and in this uh, cell, uh, first, let's look at the bottom part, the interface. I have a predict function, which is same as before. We will look at the function in a minute. We have a set of inputs, which in this case I have a text box, uh, and I can specify a bit more information around that. And I have an output, which will be text. You can add a bit more style if you like to do that, so you can have a title uh, and some examples. So examples are very nice. It's a way of uh, telling users what kind of things will work in this demo. So I will run this. Uh, and in the meantime, I will show the predict function. Uh, this is very specific to the Transformers library, uh, but again, you can use TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, or whatever uh, Python uh, ML libraries you use. But here, what I'm doing is I'm loading a translation model, which is shared by the Helsinki NLP University, uh, which translates from English to Spanish. And in the predict function, I have the inference part, so here I'm pretty much passing the text to a pipeline, and then I'm uh, extracting the translation text. So. This is the demo I created with those, uh, again, 15 lines of code. Uh, so it has a nice title, interactive demo, blah, blah, blah. It has some examples at the bottom left, which I can click. And then when I click Submit, it will do the inference, and then I get a translation. So I like the workshop, Me gusta este taller, which is the translation in Spanish. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, now you might be wondering, where does this model come from? The Helsinki NLP op Opus MTEN, yes. So Hugging Face, as I was mentioning before, has uh, thousands of models for many different applications. Uh, so for example, I, I will just copy paste this, which is the model ID. I will paste it here. So the Helsinki NLP group has open source uh, 1,200 translation models for many different combinations of languages. Uh, so for example, this one is English to Spanish, and it has a bunch of information here. So this is called a, a model card, and a model card is pretty much a way in which people can document what their model does. So uh, if you are a person that does not know how to train models, but you're a software engineer, so you know how to run code, and you know how to use existing models, the model hub is a very nice way because you have, a, and again, all of this is open source and free. It's kind of a GitHub for machine learning. So you have access to models for image classification, segmentation, for NLP you have translation, sentence similarity, you have for audio, you have for tabular data, you have for reinforcement learning. So you really have access to models across different modalities for many different applications. And the model cards are the way in which you will find the documentation of what a model does and what it's supposed to do. Uh, so in this case, I was just picking this translation model from Helsinki. Right, um, that was it for the first demo time. So now I built a nice demo, uh, I put it in a code lab, but then I don't have a way to share it with the community, right? So if you have a very good eye, maybe you notice that at the top here, it created a public uh, URL. And that means that right now, if you go to this URL in your computer or in your phone, you will have access to the demo, but this will only happen as long as the code lab is up, right? But if you want to do permanent hosting, uh, Hugging Face has also this tool which is uh, also free, which is called Spaces. So Spaces was launched around October of last year, and it allows people to host uh, and share with the community their own, uh, their own demos with Radio. Uh, since then, people have created portfolios, have uh, organized university courses with these. Uh, so it's quite nice. And nowadays, we have 5,000 or 6,000 spaces, which is quite exciting. So right now, you can go to uh, hf.co slash spaces, and you will find many spaces uh, shared by the community. And again, this go for all kinds of applications. So I will try to do it uh, a more uh, 
a quick live demo of this, but it might take a bit to build, but yeah, just to show it. Uh, so here I went to my profile picture, I, I clicked new space, uh, I wrote the name of the space, I will select Gradio, which is the open source uh, SDK I'm using today. I will click create space. And under the hood in, in Hugging Face, everything are Git based repositories. If you don't know what Git is, don't worry, but for those who know, uh, just as in GitHub, you have Git repositories and you can do Git clone and Git push and collaborate with Git repositories. Uh, in Hugging Face, the spaces are the same. So under the hood, they are Git based repositories, which means that I can Git clone this repo, work locally and work with other people and collaborate. But uh, if you prefer to not use Git uh, for any reason, you can also use the web UI. And uh, what you need to do is just create an app.py file and I will literally copy paste the code I had here in the code lab, here. So I'm literally just copy pasting. I will click commit new file. And here in files, I can see like all the files that are here and I can see the Git history. So it takes a bit to build, uh, maybe a minute or so. Uh, but in this case, it will give me an error uh, because I don't have transformers installed here. So something that you can also do with spaces is create your own requirements. So like this, so requirements, so when you do pip install requirements, so this is the same thing, so I can specify which libraries I want installed, so transformers, transform, transformers, sentence piece, and a PyTorch. So when I click commit new file, it will uh, start building again, and it will uh, set up the demo after a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of minutes the first time. The outcome will be something like this, uh, exactly this, which is exactly the same as what we were seeing before in the code lab, but now it's in the browser. So now I can put this link in social media and I, others can come and try this out so they can click, hello, my name is Omar, click submit uh, and try it with their own text, right? So that's quite nice. And as this is open source, uh, people can go to files and they can see the history of the repo and they can even open PRs to uh, do some suggestions or modifications. And they can even click here in the linked models and it has a direct link with the model that was used uh, to create this demo, which is also a nice addition. All right, uh, so that was the demo time. So three reasons uh, you should build a ML demo. So we talked about accessibility. So really this allows anyone to try out. So we've seen people from psychology, for example, trying out demos and finding some interesting issues that were not uh, catched by the people that were creating these demos. It allows to understand real world limitations of our own research. So that's especially interesting for um, the research perspective. And it's really easy. You just saw these 10 lines of code, but really uh, even if you are building very complex uh, demos, uh, that's pretty much everything it takes. So you can go to, to Gradio.app and it has components for text, for checkboxes, for radio, for uh, drop down images, videos, uh, and so on. Uh, and even for 3D objects and, and whatever. So it's quite easy to use. It has the same building block, so input, output, and an inference function, and it allows you to use Python to build some very nice demos. And what we've seen in the past is that people are sharing this in social media, for example, and that has allowed uh, some of these demos to go a bit viral, which is quite nice. Some people are building their own portfolios of machine learning with this, uh, and they are, they are applying to jobs with that. Uh, and apart from that, we've seen uh, people doing uh, all kinds of things. So for example, some universities, what they are doing is that they are hosting their demos of, as a way to show their final projects. Uh, I wanted to quickly show you a couple of last demos. Uh, so this one is Telemini, which is the one I showed at the beginning. Uh, and these are public, so that means that anyone can go and try this out with their own input. So these are really not cherry picked. This one, uh, I just wrote minions attending to EuroPython hackathon. And then you see the minions. Uh, there is this one, which is called YOLO. Uh, YOLO is a very popular uh, object detection uh, algorithm, and there have been many versions of YOLO uh, in the last couple of years, especially in the last six months. Uh, and it allows users to upload their own videos, and then it will output a video, but with a object classification. So here is a person, and so on. This one is from CBPR, which is this uh, very important computer vision conference I was talking to you before. And it allows someone to write some text here, all right? 
uh, then a target language, so for example, Korean, and then it will give you a translation in Korean, and it, it will generate a video. Uh, I don't have the audio, don't worry, but it has a, a talking face, and this face is generated, so this is with a model, uh, and with an audio translated uh, with text-to-speech. So all of this is using machine learning. And if you don't uh, like Python and you really like JavaScript, that's totally okay. So in Spaces, you can also host JavaScript with Flask, or uh, even with Fast API, you can host your own uh, sites here. Uh, so for example, this one is, uh, this Pokemon does not exist, so you can click Submit, uh, and it will generate my own uh, generated Pokemon for this conference which is not that too nice, but it's green, so I, I guess that, that goes with the topic, uh, so that's nice. Uh, and then for very uh, important libraries, so, or very popular libraries, so Keras or uh, PyTorch, for example, in which they also have their own official examples or their own hubs of models, uh, there are some very nice integrations. So for example, with a single line of code, there's an integration that allows radio to load and run inference on an existing uh, transformer models on the hub, so it allows to use any of these 60,000 models without running these 10 lines of code, so just a, with a single line of code. But also, for example, Keras uh, has some very uh, nice uh, official Keras examples. Keras is a very popular uh, uh, TensorFlow library. And the community, uh, and all of this is open source done by the community, has created 81 different demos in which anyone can go here and try out any of these uh, demos. And also, they open source almost 100 models, which is quite nice. So this sounds uh, interesting, and then maybe one question is, I want to, to get involved, how can I do it? So in the next couple of days, so from today until next week, we, we, we are organizing a hackathon. Uh, it's online, so you can just join. If you are someone that is new to machine learning, uh, you can also join, because as I just uh, shared, uh, really you don't need to have ML expertise to be able to create these uh, demos, and we can also share a, a couple of ideas on how to build some of this. So I think the email was shared uh, by email as well, but you can go to, to this link, and I have a couple of cards I can share after this talk, but anyone can join. Actually, we already have 70 members here. Uh, since this just started today, th there are some instructions here to help you. Sorry for the scrolling. But uh, there are already a couple of uh, demos up there uh, that you can uh, explore if you want. Again, all of this is free, all of this is open source, uh, all of this is using Python-based libraries. Uh, and we also have a table right next to the, to the food, uh, which has a bunch of uh, hugging face uh, stickers. So you can also come in the next couple of days, we will be around and you can also grab some stickers. Uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to present today. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, should we make questions? Yeah. Are there any questions? Yeah. Should we use microphones or? Um, you will have to come up here. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hey. Uh, what are some self-hosted options for Gradio? Yeah. So Gradio uh, is just a very simple, uh, fast API uh, program, which means that you can pretty much host it wherever you want. So Spaces is nice, it's free and you can just use it. Uh, it has some machine limitations, so if you want to host a model that weights, uh, I don't know, 100 gigabytes, you will not be able to do that. Uh, so if you have very custom cases or if you would like to host it internally for your own company, you have a couple of options. So if you want to use Spaces, you can also do private Spaces and it has organizations, so you can just share it within your organization. But you can also just use Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services or whatever provider you use. Uh, again, it's, you can also even run it locally. Uh, it's, it, it's an open source tool, uh, so yeah. So you have this app.py file, so you just do create your, you, you do Python and yeah, you, you have a flag for that, but yeah. Sure. By the way, if anyone is interested in exploring, I really recommend to go into hf.co slash spaces. Uh, because here you can explore all of these spaces created by the community. And you can sort them by most likes, so you can find some of the most exciting ones. So for example, uh, Annie Megan was one shared a couple of months ago, and it allows people to upload an image and it will convert to anime style, for example. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Cool. All right. Do we have any other questions? Cool. If anyone else has questions, I will also be outside for a for the next couple of minutes, and then you can also come to the table uh, in the ground floor. And I will also hand up, hand out some stickers, uh, patches, and cards if anyone wants. Cool. Thanks. Awesome.